Chapter 1, Genesis Writer here with Genesis Thoughts, episode number 2, where I take questions that you send me over Twitter, Facebook, Skype, and mainly YouTube comments, and I answer them in a little bit more detail than I could with a direct text response, um, just giving these questions a little bit more time that they deserve. Now, this video series is meant to be viewed as a podcast. You kind of listen to it in the background while you're doing something else. And I only include my face cam so that you can see my reactions to these questions. If you want to skip to any particular question that I'll be asking myself during this video, look at the directory in the description below this video, and you can click on any of the timestamps to jump directly to a question you want to hear me answer instead of having to listen through to all of them. As it is, let's get started with the first question. I'll try to be answering these as succinctly as I possibly can. Machine Network 9 asks, what is your favorite Covenant weapon? All Halo games. I'd have to say that my most positive reaction to a Covenant weapon has been the sword. There are a lot of uh, failed slash mostly useless Covenant weapons, like the Focus Rifle in Halo Reach or um, the Plasma Concussion Rifle, which is just... It just doesn't have enough usefulness, I feel like. The sword in Halo 3 was awesome. I've heard it was even better in Halo 2 um, with its lunge distance, and it just kind of degraded in Halo Reach with Sprint, and then in Halo 4 with Sprint, plus the ability that people were able to load out with plasma grenades and stick you right before you lunge to hit them with your sword, the sword has become almost virtually useless. And I really want to see that weapon come back because it was awesome. It was an awesome weapon, a great addition. I really wish it was still as powerful as it was. So that's probably my answer to that question. Uh, Fisherman Fizz asks, did you, and if you had, play in the global Halo 4 Championship free-for-all and get far into the tournament? Just wondering because I personally think you're probably the best Halo YouTuber. Now, I'm not the b best Halo YouTuber skill-wise for sure, okay? And especially when it comes down to free-for-all, I don't really enjoy free-for-all that much because I feel like there's a lot of games that can get away from a player, even though that player is super skilled. It's just that the randomness of the spawn, spawning system and the randomness of people going after each other can lead to a bad spree for a player for a minute or two, and then that person loses the game, which is really unfair in my opinion. What he's referring to is in before the Halo 4 Global Championship officially happened, which first place got $200,000, which is a lot of freaking money, for those of you who don't know. Uh, there were five online Halo 4 playlists that you could play in, and if you got really high on the leaderboard, you could qualify to go to the Halo 4 Global Championship and have a chance at getting some of this prize money. Well, those five playlists were graded on a leaderboard on HaloWaypoint.com, and that leaderboard pushed you higher up the leaderboard the more games you won in a row. You could only have one chance on that gamer tag for that particular playlist. So if you won 80 games in a row and didn't lose any, which that means getting first place in 80 games in a row, that is really high up the leaderboard. But if someone won 81 games in a row and they lost a game, they would be lower on the leaderboard than the person who won 80 games in a row. And to me, that is ridiculous. What it means is that the higher up people on the leaderboards were people who had won 50, 60, 70, possibly even 80 games in a row, which is something I would never be able to do. I don't claim to be that good, especially at free-for-all. But I will have to say that I played the Halo 4 free-for-all SWAT Global Championship playlist and was able to um, get a 50 in that, and was unfortunately able to see just how broken and absolutely horrible Halo 4's spawn system is. Having multiple clips I've compiled of people spawning literally right in front of me, or of me just spawning on the side. Some of my worst experiences with it were on Solace, where you could literally just sit on the side of a map and watch people spawn and pick them off with your DMR. And I actually had to go in, back in theater and watch someone do this to learn this and to see just how broken it was. But that being said, the I don't want to play free-for-all oddball, and I don't want to play free-for-all infinity, where you can call on your own ordinance. Those were also two of the five free-for-all playlists, so that leaves two other playlists that were more competitive. Those are, I think, the first two playlists that came out, and I wasn't able to play in the in the global championship during that period, that two-week period of time. Unfortunately, I was only able to play in the last three of the five playlists. So 
I just really didn't get any very far because of that. But I did enjoy watching the tournament for sure. J King asks, always nice to hear your thoughts. A few things. You seem really, and I mean really, disappointed with the PvP in Destiny, player versus player. Almost to the point you're holding back and want to be politically correct with your approach. I have the question for you. Do you honestly think any game, including Destiny, can be competitive with the aim down sight system? I really don't think so, but I'd like your opinion on it. To me, the pull down sights makes it less skillful and therefore making it easier to conquer the game. Always appreciate your videos, bro. Thank you, Jay King. Um, what he's referring to is ADS shooters or aim down sight shooters where you pull the left trigger to pull up your weapon to aim. Um, Call of Duty has proved that it can be competitive in a variety of circumstances, but in my personal opinion, I believe that Call of Duty sees a lot of its success from the fact that it's multi-platform and that is an, it is a relatively easy game for a lot of people to play and it has a very addictive ranking up system or unlocking system that we're now seeing copied in a wide variety of games. Um, I feel like the game makes it way easier on you with not only its super fast kill times, but the fact that when you pull up your gun and you aim down the sights, not only does your aiming speed reduce, allowing you to use a very high sensitivity and react extremely quickly, pull up the sights and shoot somebody, but as well, when you pull up your gun sights, you as a player move slower, allowing you to be killed easier and enemy players to be killed easier with because you're, you're moving slower and it allows you to be it allows you to easily target an enemy player. And I just don't think that that type of gameplay is as nearly competitive as Halo's gameplay is. Unfortunately, Halo has had a bad spree recently, as we all know, and it is not being pushed competitively as much as it could be or should be, and I hope that has changed with the Master Chief Collection and Halo 5 Guardians. But we will have to see it as it is a Xbox One exclusive. Both of those games will be. So... Uh, moving on, uh, Web of Twilight asks, I was also curious, but when the Master Chief Collection comes out, are you still going to be doing Halo 4 videos? I have gotten more kills in Halo 4 than any other Halo game. It's over 105,000 kills with over a 2.0 KD. There is very little chance that I will be going back to playing Halo 4 in the Master Chief Collection, even though it is included, because I feel like Halo 4, relatively speaking, is a lot less competitive and especially Halo 1 and 2, and even 3. Even Halo 3, with its uh, non, with, with its bullet registration, with its battle rifle, I really just don't think I'm going to be playing much of that because it's frustrating and it's annoying. It's, it's annoying. The, it's hard to play Halo as it is. But when you add all these other complications like ordnance in Halo 4 and sprinting and all that, and then in Halo 3, you add the fact that sometimes your shots just don't register long range and they're not, uh, your sh bullets are not rendered in real time. They're not hit scanned like Halo 2 or was it's just really annoying and i want to go back and experience that halo comet evolved and halo 2 classic experience because i played those two games on the computer i didn't get enough experience with them on console so i really want to be playing those two halo games something would, ha would happen to have to happen dramatically for me to go back to playing halo 4 even if it was in the master chief collection not to say that i won't play any halo 4 or upload any gameplay on it i'm just trying to give you guys a realistic idea of what i intend to do so moving on, Web of Twilight also asks, if you don't mind me asking, what do you currently do? Referring to my job. I currently work for a food processing facility. Um, I package ingredients for various products, such as, uh, like, as an example, not that we necessarily package this, but something like cake mix or um, some health mix where we mix together various ingredients into a powder that people then buy as a complete package pre Pre, uh, pre-mixed, and then they go off and make their own thing or pour it into a drink or something of that nature. And we do a lot of that type of thing. It's not the same ex assembly line experience. It, it uh, is working for me really well so far with not only my employers being very nice and kind to me, but also just working with the hours and being given. It's not necessarily the most exciting job around, but the fact is it's not a rote, you're doing the exact same thing every day kind of job. I do, we do a wide variety of things on a daily basis, and it, it really keeps my interest way more than some of my previous jobs have. And so I'm very thankful for that. 
I hope that gives you guys a good idea of where I work or what I do. Unfortunately, due to a confidentiality agreement with, that I signed with the company, they can't really have people telling other people what products they are packaging or making for obvious understandable reasons in the food industry and competition wise. But I do work 40 hours a week and sometimes work overtime, which I'll have to be refusing a lot of that overtime during uh, the next coming months because of the Master Chief Collection and Alien Isolation and Halo 5 Guardians beta. So that's my work. That's what it is. Um, if you have any questions about that or anything else, please leave a comment down below. Uh, moving on, uh, Advite on Twitter asks, I hope I'm saying his name right, I just love your videos. Can you upload them every day? The answer to that is no. Even if I didn't have work and spent 100% of my time either playing the game and up, either playing the game or uploading videos, and a co basically a, or a combination of those two things, I would only be able to put out a video at maximum at 48 hours, um, every 48 hours. And the reason I'm saying this is because I'm currently learning how to edit mo videos with Final Cut Pro 10. There are a lot of various issues and complications I've run in with Final Cut Pro 10 that I'm learning slowly how to solve. It is an amazing, complex, and very worthwhile um, movie editing application that I'm just trying to learn. But with a 40 hour a week job on top of that, there's just no way I can come out with videos or say I can come out with more videos than at least one video a week. If you see a video on my channel, my latest upload, I will try my very best, my very hardest, not to let that video go over a week of being out before I upload a new video. More recently, the only time I've actually broken that rule is when I was moving, which has been kind of recently, so I'm really trying to get back into the swing of things, but I'm not feeling a whole lot of uh, motivation when it comes to Halo 4 gameplay and other, other Halo games of that nature. So I really hope to get back my groove and my grind, but right now I'm actually going to take a break to play Alien Isolation on October 7th, uh, Tuesday, and I'll be uploading that as a video gameplay walkthrough series of me just playing the game and my live face cam reactions. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Not that I won't be playing Halo in the background, but I want to try something new and give myself a little break. And I think that I'll be ready to rock and roll when it comes time. And I'll learn a lot from uploading one video every day from one game and being really, really grindy with that. I can do that if I'm playing through the game and that's the only game I'm playing. So hopefully I can do that in the background as long as getting, as well as getting the last five achievements in Halo Spartan Assault. So that's kind of a lengthy answer to your question, but I really appreciate you liking my videos and I do want to come out with more and be more frequent with them. But I only will commit to, 100% commit to, uploading one video at least a week after my latest upload. So, hope that explains that question. Now, the last question is a little bit complicated and requires a little bit more explanation, and it will be the last question because it's probably going to be the most lengthy one I have to answer. The Asian Persuasion asks, why do you play BTB or Big Team Battle so much? Maybe you don't play BTB a lot, but you have been releasing a lot of BTB videos. You seem like a very competitive player, and BTB is not very competitive. That's his own personal opinion. I personally don't like it, as he says. Nice perfection, by the way. He, he was commenting on one of my videos where I believe I got a perfection in Big Team Battle. One of the main reasons I played Big Team Battle and got into it was in Halo Reach, because Halo Reach allows you to always load out with the DMR in Big Team Battle, it is updated TU 80% bloom, reduced bloom settings, and there are forged maps that Bungie has actively seeked out that were created by the community that were put into Big Team Battle, making the playlist very interesting and cool. I also had a very positive experience with Big Team Battle and Halo Reach, being that was the first playlist and really solid group of players I got together with where we all communicated and tried to win games, and we, in fact, barely ever, if ever, lost a game on Hemorrhage, which was one of my favorite maps to play in Halo Reach in Big Team Battle. I've had a lot of positive experience with Big Team Battle, and I'm sad to see where it has gone with Halo 4, but I still like to play it because when eight people are team working against eight other people, and especially when that other team is communicating fluidly, it, it's some of the most intense games I've seen, but also Halo, F Halo Big Team Battle is much more paced and much more strategical, I feel like, um, than a lot of other playlists in Halo. Now, I'm not saying that 4v4 isn't competitive, 
what I'm trying to say is that it favors my style of play much more. I am not a main slayer. I'm not an aggressive, super flashy player getting a lot of multi-kills and going into a game of Flood and getting a Killionaire every game, which, not every game, but you, you, get, you get the drift. I'm more of a passive kind of player, more of a support slash objective role from what I can tell via watching my own gameplay and from commentating over my own gameplay a lot. So Big Team Battle favors that type of play style a bunch. And so I feel like I just do better in Big Team Battle overall, which is easy for me to say because a lot of good players, especially once they become used to Big Team Battle, do really, really well in Big Team Battle. You can do really well, especially in Halo Reach and the Banshee and other things. Really cheap methods to get high KDs, camo sniping in Halo 4. What it, how, you know, there's a lot of unscrupulous and frowned upon methods in Big Team Battle that are used. And I fully understand that, and I'm not talking about that. I like the side of a big team battle that is competitive where you're working together as a team with a bunch of other really good players. I think that's awesome. And it's more slow and paced than let's say 4v4 team Slayer on a really small map, okay? I just feel like my skills are better put there. And a another thing is a lot of people don't upload enough big team battle to their YouTube channels. They just completely skip over it. They upload gameplays where they're playing with randoms in team Slayer and destroy people you know, getting 25 kills and zero deaths. And to me, that is not only incredibly uninteresting to watch, but I feel like it's not really unique. I feel like you have to have super good commentary over something like that to even make it remotely interesting. And I find that a lot of play people have come to my channel, seen my Big Team Battle videos, and watched them and gone, wow, this guy plays Big Team Battle at this level? Holy crud. I feel like there's there's a lot of players who play Big Team Battle out there who are really good, and if they were on a team, they'd be even better. A big Team Battle, if you can get with a bunch of other people, is a great introductory to callouts and other things because you can be more general with your callouts, and you can state broad overall areas, and you can slow the game down or speed the game up however much you want. Whereas in a 4v4 game, the enemy team can quickly sway the game and dictate the speed of how things are going on. One of the key things to win a Halo game is to control its speed, all right, to control how fast the game is moving. And I just feel like, via all these things I've just stated, that Big Team Battle complements my style of play better. All that being said, I really want to try to get into to 4v4 competitive more often, but the fact of the matter is, Halo, uh, especially Halo Reach, uh, MLG, and even Halo 4, the settings in those playlists are so drastically different from the normal playlist, unlike Halo 3, where basically a few weapons were switched around and the radar was removed and that was it. They're so different, competitive and non-competitive, that I feel like I just want to play one or the other. And oftentimes the people I'm playing with especially when I first get online, are not necessarily the most skilled players in the game, and I don't want to run, run them through a playlist that they don't want to play. I want to be teaming with people who are better in the future and who, people who really do want to play competitively, but I really have to see uh, playlists that are um, not so dramatically different from uh, radar, for, from playlists that use radar, okay? I want to play playlists that obviously don't have radar because it's more competitive but there are so many dramatic differences in like movement speed and things of that nature that i just want to play a game like halo one or two or three where uh or not three but uh you get what i mean where the the experience is just no radar and that's pretty much all the changes okay and i really want to play something like that so i hope to get be getting more into that but guys thank you for watching this video if you want to watch my first genesis inbox video. Click on the annotation in the top right hand corner now to watch that. It's also going to be a link in the description. And thank you everyone for asking me these questions. If you have any questions that you want to ask me in the comment section down below, feel free to do that and I'll add it to the list uh, of questions that I compile for my next Genesis Inbox video. But for now, uh, thank you for watching. Like the video, helps other people find out about it. Subscribe for more future Halo 5 Guardians um, Halo of the Master Chief Collection content, and that Alien Isolation gameplay playthrough, and I'll see you guys on the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.